Welcome. Today we are going to give you a basic introduction of some of the themes and concepts that we are going to address throughout this course, Religion and the Passions. Probably one of the most important questions to start off this course with when we're trying to talk about religion and the passions is to ask you, what's a religion? What is religion in general? What is religion specifically? What counts as a religion and what doesn't? I know this is reflexively something that a lot of you are like, I kind of know what it is already, whatever, and don't ever actually stop and ask. This is a very serious question when we're trying to figure out what counts and what doesn't. Do we want to call everything a religion or do we want to have a narrow definition? Do some things naturally get included that maybe shouldn't? We know some things are very religious, but does that mean that it's a religion? We're actually going to revisit this question a few times throughout this course, but it's probably a good place for you to start with at least asking, what is a religion? What should count? What idea do you specifically have on what a religion is? And is this something that you think is the same for everybody or just you. There's not a universal idea, by the way. And there's a lot of great scholars who have spent their entire life dedicated to this question who have different and sometimes antagonistic ideas about this. So it should be something you stop and pause and kind of play around with for a little while. The next question is really Kind of easier than what's a religion and that's what's ethics ethics is kind of one of those overarching concepts for all uf 200 courses but what counts as an ethical dilemma problem solution what is ethics is it just something codified by different philosophers or is it something that your grandmother probably has a greater hold on than those same scholars that we would be talking about otherwise? Is it something that's set up by a community or is what's ethical an uh, individual decision? How is it you define the idea of what is ethics? Again, we will spend a good amount of time navigating this through applied issues and formal categories of ethics, but how do you see this topic and how would you advance it? If somebody was to ask you, not just is that ethical, but what is the idea of ethics and what basis really is something going to be decided that is ethical? Is it about the consequence? Is it about the character of the person who's performing it? Is it about the intent that that person had in doing it. Basic ideas like this are how different ethicists even struggle with this same idea. Our final question has got to be, what are the passions? Now, prior to the mid 20th century, the notion of what the passions were was something clearly understood by people all over the world. The ideas that seem completely foreign to you today are seen differently before that, but how is it you see this idea of what the passions are? And we'll spend a lot more time getting into this specifically next time. Now, because wisdom requires that you give something uh, for it to give you something back, um, we have to kind of have a different sort of mindset that we have to be open to being challenged uh, in here. This is why I, I have you read a modified version uh, of the University of Chicago and their admittance letter to students. Uh, this class will follow this same sort of idea where we have a commitment to freedom of inquiry and expression. Uh, you have to be able to put yourself out there to be able to get something back. 
Uh, you have to be challenged and lose something to gain more out of that experience, right? There's not going to be a safe space from ideas. We can't move aside from that and engage with these ideas. Um, there aren't going to be trigger warnings on ideas because all ideas should be challenging. Uh, some ideas are going to be more so, and this class is, you know, we're reading great philosophers and great thinkers. There, There's not going to be so many things that should cause alarm, uh, although there will be ideas that are different than yours, and your fellow classmates will have ideas that are different than yours and, and should express these. Um, we have this commitment to academic freedom. Uh, that means we're not going to try to put ideas away, but we're going to try to encourage this, uh, challenge you, and and maybe even sometimes cause you discomfort uh, or offense, and that is okay. Uh, you might walk out of that being offended and say, you know what, I'm actually right. Uh, this idea is wrong, and now that we've all seen it, uh, I know it better, and I know it's wrong. Uh, or you might say, you know what, I was wrong. I, I thought I had it right, and uh, I'm glad I was challenged by this, and even though it caused me discomfort, uh, I'm now wiser. I've engaged with wisdom and can kind of emerge from that. And really, this is the idea of what we're wanting to do, is we're wanting to foster a free exchange of ideas and support of a diversity of opinion and background that's really fundamental to strengthening our community uh, and ourselves as individuals in our community. The only thing that is not, quote, allowed in this class would be some sort of universalizing statement. Uh, that is used to shut down other thoughts, expressions, uh, and ideas. Uh, in this class, when we're wrestling with ideas, like nothing should be seen as impossible, uh, other than maybe a logical contradiction that you can address and maybe see why it is, and, and maybe again be right and maybe be wrong. Uh, you don't have uh, the right to put somebody out and say that they can't talk about something because they lack experience or, or anything else, right? This is the opportunity for us to discuss this, and that's how you learn from these experiences. Uh, no one's ideas are inherently invalid, uh, not yours nor your classmates. Uh, you might be wrong, and oftentimes we all, all are all wrong, but that doesn't mean that your ideas are inherently invalid. Now, one of the interesting ideas along this uh, was argued uh, by Alexander Schultz and Nitzen in his Harvard speech. Uh, and he says, quote, without any censorship in the West, fashionable trends of thought and ideas are carefully separated from those which are not fashionable. Nothing is forbidden, but what is not fashionable will hardly ever find its way into the periodicals or books or be heard in colleges. Legally, your researchers are free, but they are conditioned by the fashion of the day. Uh, he delivered this uh, in June of 8, 1978 at Harvard. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with Solzhenitsyn, uh, Nobel Prize uh, for his work, Gulag Archipelago, uh, he suffered uh, under the Soviet Union and eventually found his way to America before returning to Russia after the fall of communism. Uh, the idea here is that we need to learn to ask ourselves very important questions. Questions that might not even be fashionable, uh, as one fashionable idea today might be out of fashion tomorrow. Something that might be uh, unthinkable might be commonplace, and then back to unthinkable. This is kind of the history of ideas over and over again. Most of us would be appalled at uh, the Greeks' idea of not paying attention to women's ideas and kind of pushing that out in some ways, or not wanting to read biographies of anything, including your childhood, because if you're important, you'll be a, the important when you're an adult. I don't care about your, your childhood, was the fashion of the day. Today, most biographies about people include long sections about their childhood because we believe this might help shape who they were and those decisions that they make. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, uh, and different fashions on how you're going to address an idea will kind of come in and come out. We need to challenge ourselves, uh, which is going to require that we separate what is fashionable from what is real, what ideas are significant and important, uh, because we're trying to figure out what things are. You need to feel free to question the prevailing doxa, the zeitgeist of the day, in order to actually learn and move forward. 
Uh, this is why we cannot have the safe spaces before, uh, and that you should, in fact, be triggered uh, in some ways, uh, but always remain respectful of others uh, in class. Uh, understand that you might disagree with somebody, uh, you disagree with their ideas, they're not inherently uh, evil for having a different view than you. Uh, one side of whatever debate doesn't have to be evil. Uh, sometimes they can just be wrong, or sometimes the truth might be in between, and neither of you might be right. Uh, this is the way that we learn, is through this dialogue, and this is what we're trying to, to move forward with that. I've heard it said that without the why, the what doesn't really matter. So why do you need this class? Why is it that we need to talk about things like religion, ethics, and the passions at all? In some ways, this is for me to answer. In a lot of ways, it's also for you to think about. What is it you hope to get out of this class? I hope that as you go through life and you have a greater understanding of what the passions are, you're going to be able to identify them in your own life and find ways of navigating around the pitfalls that exist in your own life. That you understand what systems of beliefs and practices are and why they're formed and what that means for you while you figure out your religious needs, as it were. So you should also ask yourself the question of, what is it that you want to get out of the class? Why are you taking this class other than just, I have to because it's a requirement? Why do you select this one instead of another? Ask yourself these questions about what you're wanting and put the why on you as well. Now that this introduction is mostly done, you should be thinking about questions you'd like to ask me. Going forward when we have the office hours or any questions or concerns you have about what you're expecting out of this class, you should be thinking about this and thinking about what you'd like to ask not just me, but also your fellow students in these open discussion boards. In fact, you should even be thinking about who you are and explain yourself to other people. What is it you hope to get and why? What is it about you in particular that is finding this topic engaging? And think of something interesting about yourself before broadening this out to everybody else. You have something that makes you you, that makes you interesting, that doesn't make you like everybody else. The more you're willing to share that with your fellow classmates, the more all of you can go down this path together instead of it just being a disparate class of watching stuff and doing everything by yourself. And when you're engaging with other people, you'll usually find that you're going to get more out of the material than just doing it on your own. So think of how you'd like to identify yourself when addressing these questions to all of your fellow classmates as well.